In this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at muscles involved in lordosis. And what I've done is I've broken it up into three parts. We've got part one, which is the exaggerated curve of the spine. We've got part two, which is the anterior pelvic tilt. So the front of the pelvis being pulled down. And then the final part is the knee moving inward and the internal rotation of the leg. Now, all of these muscles and everything that I'm talking about make up and are the cornerstone of my How to Correct Lordosis 12-week program. So if you want to stretch these muscles out, if you want to reposition the pelvis and reposition and flatten off that exaggerated curve, please do go to the link below. Uh, just click on it and you can enroll in the program today and get started straight away. So let's find out what the muscles are and what part of the body they're affecting. The first muscle we're looking at is the psoas. And it's the muscle that exaggerates the curve of the lumbar spine. That will become clear when we understand where it is. So if we were to look at this image here, we can see the muscle going right up through the pelvis and joining onto all lumbar vertebra and the, the bottom thoracic vertebra. Now, if we come onto this image here, which gives us a perspective of the whole area. So you can see all the different muscles, but the psoas, again, is coming up through this area, again, joining onto all lumbar vertebra and uh, the bottom thoracic vertebra. What we also find is that we get connective tissue that goes up further in the form of fascia that goes up into uh, the diaphragm as well. So where is this muscle? Well, it starts T12, as I've mentioned, goes all the way down to L5. And then when we come to uh, where it ends on the lesser trochanter of the femur, now essentially what we're talking about is the bone that goes up through the leg and then joins into the uh, into the pelvis at the top. Now, the lesser trochanter is just a bony landmark on the inside of the bone here. So it joins here, here, and all the way up the lumbar spine. So what does the muscle do? Well, it flexes the hip, and it, as I've mentioned, it creates the exaggerated curve of, as, of the spine, as I've, uh, as I've mentioned. So if we were to look at it uh, from a side view, we want a natural S curve in that part of the spine. So if I then draw a very poor picture of um, the pelvis, and then you've got the femur coming off it, it goes all the way down sort of through this area. So when this muscle becomes tight and gets closer together, all it's doing is just creating an exaggerated curve at the lumbar spine. So this is the, the major muscle of lordosis and the main muscle of lordosis because it's creating that hyperlordotic curve. So number one, uh, muscle number one is the psoas. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at muscles that affect the anterior pelvic tilt that comes along with lordosis. The first one is the iliacus and it's very closely related to the psoas. So if we look on this diagram here, you can see it all the way around the sort of bowl of the of the pelvis and then comes down. Now again, if we look at it from a different perspective, if we look at all groups of muscles, you can see it on the inside here going all the way around. Again, very closely related to the psoas because it's right next to it. And also it joins in to the same place. So the lesser trochanter of the femur. So again, you can see there's the femur coming up here. Um, here's the outside of the femur. This is the inside. So the lesser trochanter is in there. You've got the psoas coming down and you've got the iliacus coming down in there as well. It starts in the upper two thirds of the iliac fossa, but essentially with all regard to these um, uh, technical terms, don't worry about that. Lesser trochanter of the femur is the top of the femur on the inside. The two, upper two thirds of the iliac fossa essentially is the inside of the pelvis bone from there to there. So that's where it's starting. Again, what does it do is it flexes the hip. So like we talked about before, we've got the uh, natural curve of the spine here, but what we've now got is the pelvis coming off here. We've got the leg and this muscle, because it joins on the inside, goes through and down. When this one becomes tight, it's now pulling on the pelvis because it doesn't attach to the spine. So it isn't gonna create an exaggerated curve in the spine. It may do it directly by tilting the pelvis down, which is then gonna assist in the exaggerated curve, but it's not directly creating it because it's not directly attached to it. But what it does do is it flex the hip and it assists in the anterior pelvic tilt um, 
uh, of the pelvis. So those are the first two muscles, the psoas and the iliacus. Now these can be known as the um, iliopsoas. So you may have heard them put together like that, but essentially it's two different muscles. You've got the psoas and the iliacus. The second muscle involved in um, at the anterior pelvic tilt is the rectus femoris. Now, where is this muscle? You can see it on the screen here. It's this red one on the inside of the thigh that comes through here. Now, where does it start? On the anterior inferior iliac spine. So what does that mean? It's the front part of the pelvis, basically. There's two lumps and it's the one, the below one. So you've got, let's just say, um, sort of comes off the top. You've then got the first lump, then you've got the second lump, and then it sort of comes round here. This is a very bad drawing. So this is the, the sort of front, the front of the pelvis. This is the um, anterior superior iliac spine, or A-S-I-S as it's known. And then this lump below is the A-I-I-S. So it joins here and joins down through here. So again, what we are, uh, what it's doing is again, it's helping flex the hip and assisting in the anterior pelvic tilt. Now, where does it end? It comes all the way down with the rest of the quadriceps, joins into the quadriceps tendon, through the patella, into the, um, uh, through the tendon below the patella, the patella tendon, as it's known, uh, and into the uh, tibial tuberosity, which is essentially, if you go to your, your patella on the front of your leg, and then you go down about an inch or two, there'll be a lump, and it's there. That's the tibial tuberosity. So that is, again, where, um, where that one inserts. So you've got the iliacus coming off the inside through here and you've got rectus femoris all when they become tight and shortened they will pull the pelvis down and again this will be um, will be feeling tight all the way through. These final muscles are the ones that internally rotate the leg so or pull the knee inward in that direction. So we can have lordosis or hyperlordosis as it really should be called, which is the exaggerated curve of the spine. We've also talked about the anterior pelvic uh, tilt. And then what we've also got is the leg can also rotate inwards. So these can be different effects of um, or indirect effects of lordosis with regards to the anterior pelvic tilt and the knee going inwards. The first muscle we're looking at is the tensor fascia lata. Now, where is this one? You may not have heard of this one before. Now, it joins onto the anterior superior iliac spine. So I talked about that one before. That's the, the top lump on the front of the pelvis. You can see the muscle here. So it's at the top there, sort of on the side of the hip. Again, if I was to draw it on this diagram that we've always had up all the way through, it's that muscle there. So it starts at the top here. And then it ends on the lateral condyle of the tibia. Now the tibia is the bone of the lower leg. So how does a muscle that's only up here join onto a bone that's all the way down here? Well, it goes through what is known as the IT band. So it joins into that with the glute max as well, sort of from the back. So the glute max is back here. So it joins in with that and can pull tight uh, through there. So what does this one do? Well, it can internally rotate the hip. So what it's doing is it's moving that knee, internally rotating it, which is rolling it in that direction. So if your knees point inwards, it will be in part due to this muscle here. It also abducts the hip, which is taking the foot out to the side up in this direction. And it also assists in flexing the hip as well. So there will be a crossover with the anterior pelvic tilt as well. So we've got muscle number one for, um, you could say assisting in the anterior pelvic tilt because of where it's positioned and also the internal rotation uh, of the knee. The penultimate muscle is the gluteus medius and we're gonna be talking about a specific part of it. And we wanna be talking about the front portion of it, so the front fibers of this muscle. So this is the front of the hip here, this is the back here, so we're talking about these anterior fibers as they're known. So where does the muscle start? 
surface of the ilium. The ilium is this big pelvis bone here. So it starts on the lateral surface, which is the outside surface essentially. And then it inserts on the greater trochanter of the femur. So the uh, lesser trochanter is on the inside in here. This is the greater one where the gluteus medius and uh, minimus, which will be underneath that one about there, they join. So what does it do? Well, certainly the anterior fibres, which are the ones we're focusing on for reasons that we've talked about, is it internally rotates the hip. So again, it's looking at rolling that knee inwards. It abducts the hip. So again, it brings the leg out in this direction and it assists in flexion. So again, you could say there's some crossover into the anterior pelvic tilt, but essentially it's bringing this part and this part of the muscle closer together, getting tighter, which is gonna roll that leg inwards, uh, creating that um, internal rotation of the hip. And finally, we've got a group of muscles, which are the adductor muscles. Now again, you can see on here, they are positioned on the inside of the leg. So if we, you can just about see some of them here coming down out of the pelvis and onto the inside of the leg. So we've got adductor uh, mag, uh, longus, magnus, and you've also got brevis. I'm also going to be talking about gracilis, which is the one which would essentially come down through here if we were talking about it and then join on the inside of the tibia. Now, where does it start? Well, the inferior pubic, pubic ramus, ramus of ischium. So what we're talking about is this bone here, and then you've got a bone just in behind it here, which we're talking about. And then you've got the ischial tuberosity, which are the posterior fibers as well. Again, the ischium is this bone on the underside. If you were to sit down, you would be sat on the ischium. So that is that bone at the back there. Where does it end? The medial uh, condyle of the femur. Uh, and the femur. So you can see it basically joins all the way in through here. And then you get gracilis, which also comes through onto the tibia as well. So you could have, excuse me, tibia, excuse my uh, poor writing this. You could have tibia on there as well. Now, again, what's this muscle doing? Well, it adducts. So it's bringing the leg inward already. So if these muscles become tight, so if that pulls in that direction and that pulls in that direction, it's going to drop the knee inwards. They do help extend the hip and medial rotation of the tibia. So again, it's rolling the knee inward. So we can start to see if we understand what posture of the or what um, the posture of the spine is that's involved in lordosis, we can start to see the muscles that are involved in that and the after effects of it because if we pull the spine in we can have a tilted pelvis we can also have tightness coming through here so what we are essentially talking about is all of these muscles through this complex all the way up here that are pulling your first of all your spine inward your pelvis down and then your leg rolling inward as well. So these are all the muscles that we need to be focusing on when it comes to uh, stretching out and being able to manage the position of the pelvis, the spine and the knee.